I'm finally here on Minerva Reef, one of the most remote places in the world. So there I was, finally anchored at Minerva Reef. Minerva Reef is actually an atoll. It's circular with a small hole in the reef, uh, which allows vessels in. The point of coming here, apart from it being an incredible place, is that it's on passage to New Zealand. And the weather around New Zealand can be a little bit bad at times. So it's a good place to come to Minerva Reef, sit out the bad weather, wait for a good window before continuing on. The thing that you do notice about this place apart from it being incredibly beautiful, is that it is in the middle of nowhere and if things turn bad, it can become incredibly brutal. Toolbox out, lots of pipes and wrenches lying about the place, unwashed dishes and a dive knife. What can this all mean? Just a quick recap from the job that I was doing in the last episode. Still at it, trying to clear the cockpit drains before I set off on the next leg. Here's where the uh, scupper comes through to the cockpit. I've been ramming stuff down here all afternoon. All manner of things. I cannot get that blockage shifted, and I don't know what it is. It might actually just be a spoon or something. I have lost things down there before. Down in the bowels of the boat, working hard. Uh, had to do the gearbox oil, check it, and uh, top it up just a tad. That was done by getting down there. Extremely inaccessible, but a job that needed to get done. And now that's done, tick it off the list. The other thing is, again, the scupper, working on that again today, all yesterday, didn't get the job done, so now we're back in here. That's where it comes out from the deck, and over there is where it goes out to the sea, and more pipework behind, and that uh, was completely blocked by this, a spanner. There's also a lot more concretions in there. The spanner went in, partly blocked it, and then uh, the concretions blocked the rest. I'm still not able to get it completely clear, but it'll have to do, I think. Yeah. Another thing I previously mentioned was the fact that when you go to New Zealand, they have very strict bio laws and the bottom of the boat has to be free of growth. Um, so this was an ongoing job. Uh, before I left Minerva Reef, and I'd already planned for this, I had to do the last cleanups. So it was time to get down, dive under the boat, and make sure she was squeaky clean. But it wasn't just that, trying to satisfy the requirements of the New Zealand government. I wanted a clean bottom on the bottom of the boat because it makes you go faster. The cleaner the bottom, the slipperier the boat, and the faster she goes. And Lord, with my boat, I need speed. Wind's come up again. There's only four of us left in this anchorage. Everybody else has gone over to the other side of the atoll. And then it was time to do what I'd come here to do. The weather was perfect. The tides were perfect. I had an engine that worked. I was going to go onto Minerva Reef. After a pain in the ass morning, I'm finally here. I'm finally on Minerva Reef, one of the most remote places in the world. A huge circular reef, at least 250 miles in one direction from Tonga, uh, 800, 900 miles to New Zealand and the other. That's how remote we are. Very few people come here. Uh, a few yachties every year, and that's about it. And here I am. 
Minerva Reef. Gotta be careful where I walk. It's very, very slippery. And even though the tide is out, um, it's uh, a lot, there's a lot of water here. <laughs> it's just, look at that. It's actually very nice warm water. Yeah. Should have brought some soap with me. It's barren. This is the only land for hundreds and hundreds of miles out here. trying very carefully not to fall in with a the camera. There's lots of pools of water here. Uh, and I need the camera for the rest of this trip. <laughs> I'm down to one last camera now. This is, this is like being in a, on an alien world. It is alien and it's like, like nothing I've seen before. Stretching back into the distance there is the rest of the reef. At this point, I was going to do a little commentary about just how alien this place looked when we had some visitors, but not from another planet. A military aircraft just flew over. Uh, couldn't see where it was from, might have been New Zealand, but this area is under dispute. Uh, who, who actually owns it, basically? Uh, Tonga versus Fiji and they've almost come to blows well at least they've had they've had gunships out here posing at each other at one point or other so um, uh, and I know the New Zealand uh, government keep an eye on it because there's a lot of boats they they like to know who's coming down to their country because all the boats here are here for one reason uh, they're, they're sheltering waiting for the next weather window to get down to New Zealand I found out later that it actually was the New Zealand Air Force and they were checking the identities of the yachts anchored there in Minerva Reef. Of course, I didn't hear their call because I wasn't on board, but friends let them know that I was there, but exploring the reef. Of concern to me is the fact that the tide is coming in. It's very flat here. Uh, the tide is over there, that's the open sea, the lagoon is in this direction. When that tide comes through over the rim of those rocks over there, it's going to come sweeping through here quite quickly. Um, and I have my, my boat, my trusty steed over there, uh, tiny shaddies waiting for me on the end of a very thin piece of rope. <laughs> um, I do have a radio with me in case it all goes bad. As I suspected. I've got to get this shot quickly because this is going to be a bit nasty. Oof. A bit scary and I'm trying to get this done. As I thought, uh, the tide is starting to encroach on the reef. Uh, it's coming in. It will cover this area. As soon as it gets over the lip of the reef behind me here, it's going to encroach through here very quickly. It, well, encroach is the wrong way. It's going to swamp this area quite quickly and turn what is a serene scene into something of turmoil and nastiness that I don't want to be part of. This is all rocks. You don't want to get stuck out here. Um, there's clams everywhere here. It's 
brilliant. It's beautiful. I wish I could stay, but it, it is getting a little bit dangerous to stay now. I need to move. And the dinghy's way over there. Not far from the dinghy now, but those waves behind me are getting closer and closer. Those waves are beginning to come across the top. I really do need to get out of here and watch my step. The last thing I want to do now is break my leg. Oh, if the gods hear that, they'll, uh, they'll have fun with me. None of this was underwater when I left. Dinghy's right over there now. It's already coming up the little beach or there's like a rock ledge that I put the anchor down by has disappeared by the dinghy. But will the engine start? We'll find out in just one moment. Uh-oh. Anchor is up and uh, motoring across the reef, uh, on the inside of the reef, not across the reef obviously, to a friend of mine on a boat called Mer Nomad. He has internet connections so he's going to email my friends back home, my eyes on shore, uh, tell them that I'm leaving today because I'm a bit, I've been a week here pretty much in the, uh, in the reef, in Minerva Reef and they don't know when I'm leaving for New Zealand. So I've given myself a window of three weeks. I'm resetting the clock uh, so they don't get worried. Hopefully I can do it in less than three weeks, but I've heard of a, one of the fast boats out there. He's done 42 miles in 24 hours. So that doesn't bode well. And you know me and my passages, <laughs> nothing's ever easy. You gotta fight for every mile. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's just the one message that I've left. It's two addresses. That's my eyes on shore and my sister there at the top. I just put them both on there. Yeah, and just that one message. Okay. So that's awesome. That takes a weight off my mind to let my friends at home know what's happening. Uh, so they're gonna send an email. They give me their boat card and a USB stick that I'd lent them. And the best thing, Susan, thank you very, very much. American homemade brownies. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna eat enjoy that. We're away from uh, where we were anchored, trying to find the hole. <laughs> Beg your pardon? No, that's not been rude. I'm trying to find the hole in the reef because it is a circular reef with a, a little hole, the entrance. So we've got to find the entrance. Um, I'm using the plotter to do so. I'm being lazy here. Uh, it's somewhere over there. Got the mainsail up with one reef in it. I uh, thought I'd just uh, be careful going through the gap, but uh, I think we're okay. Uh, passing the, all the other boats moved over to another anchorage because of the wind the other day. I should have done, I didn't, but uh, it's okay. So they're all over there. And a friend of mine, Andrew, on his boat, he's got the Moody, which was built in Plymouth, my hometown. He's coming out uh, at the same time. Uh, he, he's, I mean, that, his boat is a slow boat, but it's faster than my boat. I have the slowest boat. I will be the last boat probably this season to leave from the Pacific to New Zealand. I think I'm gonna go for that record. That's where we were. 
Somewhere over there is the gap. Somewhere. But where? Wow, doing 4.9. The tide must be going out through the gap. It's probably the fastest we'll do this trip. <laughs> I don't suppose you can actually see it, but I can. That's the entrance. Or the exit, as it is in this case. And there's reef either side of it. Got to get this right. the back a little bit and we're getting the uh, sea swell and slop here and the thing is that's pushing me directly onto the reef at this side so I have to be very careful stay in the middle of the channel according to what the plot is saying uh, there is um, quite close. Oh, scary. Gonna have to go out a bit further than the reef because I don't know how shallow it is for a ways out. I can see the, the sand going further out from the entrance. So I need to get a bit of distance. Also, I'm on the weather side of it at the moment, I'm on this side anyway. So I want to get well away from that. That's my friend Andrew and he's moody behind me, about to uh, go through. You can see in this shot completely different sea conditions. That's because we are, we are at sea, out of the reef, and in open water, bound for New Zealand. It's dark outside and I've had a can of meatballs and spaghetti for my dinner. There's completely nothing to be seen out there. Well, there is, but the camera won't pick it up. There's the course I should be on, and that's where I am. Not really as bad as it looks because um, I need to be west, southwest, and that's what we're doing. There's a couple of other boats next to me um, and they're quite close and I'm just watching while they pass me. It's dark outside, especially the one down here. Um, he's fairly close to me as he comes in and the wind is changing so Shaddy's sort of bending the course round a little bit now. Uh, you can see, or you can just see it there, look, uh, down towards the southwest. You can't see them, but the boats are either side of me at the moment, but passing in front, which is where I want them, out of the way. I don't have to worry about them tonight. Uh, coming up my back end. Um, nothing much to see. It's just dark out there. It's a little bit lumpy and bumpy. I'm going to get some sleep soon. Uh, but uh, we've got my crew member here, Wilson. Uh, he's on watch. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please press the notifications bell on the channel and you'll never miss another episode. Placid and serene into a turmoil of tur turmoil in it, in this, and roughness and stuff. So actually, it's no laughing matter. My hat's been fucked.